We've got an interesting thing to look at today. It's a Sony Solid State Memory Camcorder PMW-F5. I think this is what some people would call a, a digital cinema camera. Uh, I think it's PL or something Z lenses, depending on whether you have this uh, lens adapter fitted or not. Like the more cinema type lenses. RE lenses or Sony lenses. I think that's what this is, but there are various other lens mount adapters. I've got built in ND filters, which you can bring in there. A screen on the side takes SX, SXS cards, which are PCIe, like solid state drive type things, using the Express card, I think it's 34mm wide connectors. There's some USB ports, there's an SD card, which I think is for saving configuration, not for recording too. There's quite a corroded earphone jack there. Some auxiliary power output connectors. Battery goes on the back, but this is a a module that can be removed and I think other things can go on there like a raw file recorder for 4K video maybe? Something like that, I saw that mentioned somewhere in the specifications. And then there's another 12 volt input if you don't have that attached which gets mirrored out to there. There's some 12 volt outputs for accessories. And there's quite a few other IOs, uh, audio input balanced, microphones or line level. And then there's four SDI outputs, an HDMI output, and then got time code in or out, gen lock in, a test out, which I think you can get composite video out of maybe, and a shutter input presumably and then there's a remote connector there's some controls there for the phantom power of the microphone or inputs and then you can choose whether these uh, audio inputs are line digital AES EBU or microphone level there's a viewfinder connector there I don't have a viewfinder unfortunately so we can't see what that looks like but it's, it's a viewfinder Okay, there's a bit of tape covering some kind of slot. I guess that's also what's happening down here. Not sure why. So this had a, a very large... I think it's they're trying to weave a seal it because there's a little hole under that. Anyway, this had a very large piece of tape over it with no good written on it with a capital F. And yeah, I guess that means it's no good. But it does sort of work sort of work. Let's try it out. I don't have any of those memory cards unfortunately. Not here so we can't try that. But uh, let's see. Join up an SDI. can't remember which whether it's the bank ones or the main or subs which have the overlay printed on it but we'll find out. With this power supply here which we can clip onto the back. and boot it up. Unfortunately, the screen on the side there is broken. I have a large dot on it. You can see it says Sony there briefly. And if we turn on the, the video... So now we can use this quite laggy knob to navigate these menus. And I think we're ready to go now. That's it. That's the output. Oh uh, yeah, various ND filters, none, 0.9, 1.8. Now it's making a beeping noise and this light is flashing. Oh look, the screen is partly working now. That's interesting. It didn't do that before. It had nothing on it when I tried it earlier. That's interesting. Does that mean it's healing itself? Okay. Can change the frames per second 60 I guess that's good enough the shutter angle the color temperature I don't know what these bottom ones do because we can't see it I don't know about that one 
Well, that one says the battery voltage is 16.6. Yes, well, that's mirrored up on the screen there, as long as the resolution and the like. There's a menu you can go into, which has all sorts of things that you can configure. There's also a a Wi-Fi card. We didn't look at that inside this cover or Wi-Fi adapter USB in there. And so this camera has a website that you can go to and then in there it's got all the configuration stuff. I wonder if that's still active and when I looked at it before. Probably won't be because you have to connect to Wi-Fi up to to it in order to do that. Oh, the problem is in order to use that Wi-Fi you need to know what the password is and I can't remember what the password is. The thing called Wi-Fi, there it is. Ah, oh, no, wait a minute. It's under this. Basic authentication. So you need to know what that is. That's that. Um, so you have to put that in as the password. Admin, and then that as the password. So let's just go into that. Alright, and now we'll look at what is on the web page. There it is. So it's got a... Pretty much the same thing again, and then, but also you can go to this menu, and then you can access all the setup stuff again, and if possibly easier to understand way. It's got all the things: record, control, picture, cache, record. Yeah, which means you can get it to continuously record so that when you hit record it saves that pre-recorded bit that's been rolling around in a buffer a lens file a 3d lookup table and you can choose the formats for the different um, outputs and so you can get the 4k out of the out of the SDI terminals even though the specifications for the camera seems to suggest that it only does 3G SDI, but in order to do that at a decent frame rate, you'd need to have you know, look at what that does. You'd need to have 12G SDI, wouldn't you? For 12 gigabits, because it's 11.9 something. If you have this running at 60 frames per second. Okay, so that test terminal there on the side is the HD Sync. Which is weird because you can't adjust that. Because I remember looking at the the menu on the camera. Uh, when you go to the output, what are we under video? This one under video. Uh, maybe we can't access it because we're in the same menu on the other thing. Oh, huh, that's also interesting. The menu is on the screen since I've never seen this screen before because that didn't work before. That's weird. Oh, there you go. I guess it was like that before. Ah, look, it works more now. There's more lines of it that are visible. Alright, let's take this camera apart and see what's inside it. We've fiddled around with that enough. Ah, uh, yeah, I also, what I did with it... Or oh, what? I signed... Oh, I probably forgot everything because it seems to forget. I don't know. Yeah, I signed that to change different types of waveform monitor. I don't know what these ones do. Oh, that controls what, whether the overlay is on there or not. So it's got an error code, you can see there, E9111D, and I looked that up in the service manual and it was something to do with some CPU is unhappy, which is a bit, like, which is a bit disappointing. Well, I guess I wouldn't have it if it worked, would I, because I don't normally get hold of stuff that is in good condition. That's the whole deal with getting hold of stuff for not very much money. Okay, so in the manual, there's a section on error codes, and it says there E91, which is an error code between host CPU and peripheral devices interface. And then depending on what comes after that, which in this case it's 1-1, which means 1 EMMA application processor IC 1400 on the AVP19 board and then the second digit's 1 so when the third is 1, which is that then you look up on this table to get that digit 
which is also one, so it stays exactly the same thing. And it says abnormal symptom code, which we have D. I wasn't able to find any reference to that anywhere. Or maybe it's that. No, because we're looking for one digit. That's two digit, two digit, one digit. It only goes down to C. A, B, C, D. So I don't know what the D means because they don't tell us unless there's a, a, a different version of this manual, but this is all I could find on, with a quick search. Anyway, we'll turn this off and then we'll take it apart and we'll see what things are inside it. I want to see if there's water damage in it because, yeah, maybe that's why it's doing that. Especially since that uh, that earphone connector there seems to be a bit corroded and so are these screws. Maybe it's been a bit rained on or something like that. Could it be that easy to get that error to go away by just um, cleaning some connectors that are a bit corroded? Don't know. We'll try and find out at least. Oh yeah, the other thing is I have tried holding a lens I don't have any lenses that fit either of these mounts because I don't really have big fancy cinema cameras like that, like this. So I held another lens in front of the mount and it did appear to give a reasonable picture, although it was kind of washed out looking, but I think that's because it's in that log format, so it's a like a weird dynamic range thing. So it would need to be graded in order to look like a normal, nice, bright, saturated image. Look, there's a USB plug that, a USB socket that can be accessed by that. I wonder if that's to do with software upgrades. Oh, there's some fancy wires in there. They're probably micro coax. Or micro, micro, micro coi. I've looked up online and you can get a replacement LCD panel for this. It's pretty expensive though. I don't know if it's worth it. Could this thing benefit me in any way? In order to use it, I'd have to get a proper lens, and yeah, that's not going to be cheap. Does this have autofocus? Oh yeah, it's pretty wet. Down there. Guess that's why it keeps forgetting the time, because that's probably flat. Now I just want to know, can these be unplugged? This one here. Oh yes. And this. Alright, so there's the first piece opened. You can see various corrosion on there. We will want to take that apart to just inspect that LCD panel. Just save that to later and do it now. Now in there, you can see there's corrosion on these boards. So it's been a bit wet. I guess we should take it all apart, hose it all down, and put it back together and see if anything changed. So what it's talking about with that error code was, what board number was that? AVP19? Which I think from the exploded view was one of these deepest internal boards. So yeah, not easy to get to that. Guess if I decide to replace the screen and try this thing out, it will be a part two because I'll have to buy some parts. This is just an investigation. First time taking apart such a fancy expensive camera. That's a little Wi-Fi thing. Sony IFU-WLM3. I wonder, do we take these things off separately or does the whole side panel come off with those? Okay, looks like it comes off with those quite tidily. There's corrosion up the top there. You see the viewfinder connector stayed there. Oh, look at that. The audio parts on there plugged in with that and they unplugged when I pulled on the board. Bits of tree. Now, these quite delicate looking connectors what does that go to? Well, that goes to the USB connector. Now, those are different numbers of ways. How do those unplug? I don't even know what that is. 
Mm, I don't know how to undo that without destroying it. I don't think that went to anything, did it? So how do those come out? They've got some kind of metal cover thing on them. Oh yeah, look at that. They slide off, wow. And are those different number of ways? Or are they the same? They appear to be the same. So we should mark them so that they don't get it wrong when putting it back together. Get some good pens. But if we're going to wash the boards, then the marks will get washed off. And I'll make this one blue. They already had a blue mark on them. They all did. I wonder if it's keyed some other way. I don't know, but that's got black coloured tape there, and it went to that one. And that one's got white coloured tape, and it went to that one. Yeah, we've separated that, which is all those uh, output and other connectors. Something's holding this. There's that connected there. There's other two connectors and cables which sneak around under that guide. Now, how are we going to remember where all this stuff goes? I need to take some photos of this somehow so that I can remember some of this stuff. Alright, I'm going to take some photos of the various connections because it's just getting a bit dodgy and hard to put back together. All right, we're going to unplug all this stuff now. I guess I could also watch the video, couldn't I, if I wanted to know where this stuff went. Okay, well, there's that back panel. And it's all those thick wires there, and all these fancy thin ones. Go down to this board here, which comes out to that. That expansion connector. And that there, it's got three wires paralleled onto each pin for the, the power input. A little fan there. The door for the memory cards. And I wonder what the best way is to take these out. Seems like the front's going to come off easily once we undo those two screws at the bottom. Kind of plant matter or something in there. Maybe it's used outside. I, mean, I did look at the hour meter of this the other day and it was a thousand one hundred I think. Something like that, which isn't a huge number of hours, is it? Doesn't seem like a huge number of hours to me. That's about a year of full-time use, is it? Now there's high-speed lines. Take some photos of that. Okay, now I'm going to pull this off. Now, is that again two connectors that have the same pinning? I don't know why they did that. Put brown on that one. Okay, well here's the back of the image sensor. See, it's got a heat sink on it. And this blue board which I think that might take those going off to the the contacts which go to the lens, I think. And then for the ND filter, that little adjuster there, it's got a board down there so it senses the position that that's set to. Looks like it's a little the hall effect or reflective thing. Don't know, is it wise to take out the sensor and look at it? Maybe not. Just put that over there. So that's the connector that comes over from the audio stuff. So it's like analog and digital mixed. And then there's a plastic clip thing. I think it holds all sorts of stuff in the viewfinder board. And that's attached by their mount things for the viewfinder. Okay, a video signal for the viewfinder. It's going to be a mission to put back together, isn't it? Let's unscrew this board and see what happens. What I want to do is inspect that board that the fault is supposedly on and see if that dirty or gross or something. But it could easily be one of the connections to the other boards which is from it, which is causing the problem. Uh, that's got heat sink, heat sinking, transferring thingies on it. So it's not going to just come off. Also got heaps more ribbon cables, micro coax cables going to it. See there's two screws here which make it look like that board down there slides out when these screws are undone. It also releases all that plastic stuff. So in order to get that out we need to unplug that from the back there. And then that cable there needs to come out. 
And then that cable over the top needs to come out. Then something over here needs to come off. And that needs to unplug. Now is this the board that was complaining about? Don't know, what is this board? Pretty dirty. It says that's H HPR44. I don't think that's the one, is it? We want AVP19. I'm not even going to know what way around that went. AVP19. I bet it's that one, the hardest one to get to. Now this comes off. That there, which is the USB connector. This one here was not screwed down. It's just retained by that plastic thing. And yeah, that's got another ribbon cable. Perhaps we should mark that with red. Guess the service manual will tell me where all the stuff goes with it. With some very complicated exploded view type things. So what's this? This is APR94. I guess it's audio. It's got Burr Brown chips on it. And then now that's exposed an RE307 board, which looks like a power supply. And uh, that's not going to come out because there's heaps of heaps of wires going between that and that one. Yeah, so I guess the one we we're looking for is that one. The AVP19, I guess. Okay, let's unglue that. Well, it's not glued, just, um... Oh, someone has written on the CN500, so that is written there. So it should be possible to know to put it back. Do all these things have writing on them? No, nope. Sort of, but not very... not in a very easy to understand way. Oh, that's already undone at the other end. Which means I did it at the wrong end. That's a DPR342. Look at that big chip on it, Sony. That looks to be some quite high-end processing stuff because it's got these nice differential pairs coming off of it. Maybe that drives the memory card sockets, possibly, through that onto there, maybe. PCIe, some kind of CPU with RAM around it. Dirty things on the thermal pads. Now what, how do we get this off? Weird thing is there weren't any screws holding those, I don't think. Even though there is screw holes, it seems to be clipped by that. I'm not sure how it comes apart. All that stuff is one frame thing. I don't know, do we need to unscrew it from the base? It can be unscrewed from the base. It didn't really do anything, did it? I guess we have to take heaps of other stuff off. Like this whole card reader assembly thing. Okay, that only screws on by a few cables. But it's attached by two of those high speed type coax cables. Micro coax, I think. Bottom bit which has the USB ports and the SD card reader holder thing. Okay, that under exposes one more screw. And I'm gonna remember that that goes somewhere in relation to that. Take this off as well. Oh no, these are different length screws, are they? Oh no, I think they're all the same. It would be sad if they were different lengths. And what a mess we made of this thing. Think I'll ever be able to get this back together? Okay, well that's that audio interface thing. Oh look, there you go, now that comes off. But, will it come apart? That's... There we go. AVP19. That's the board. Is it? Yes, that's that's the one that supposedly has the fault. And does have corrosion there. Pull the heat sinky bits off of it. And it's got some kind of hard out CPU thing on it. So supposedly this board has a fault. So it says I see 1400 on this board. I guess it's that. There's no designators. So there is corrosion on around that screw hole there. 
wonder if that's sprayed onto some of this other stuff. The bottom plate's a bit gross and dirty. Mm. Okay, so water's been sitting in there. Just trying to keep as much of the stuff connected together as possible so I don't have such a job trying to work out where all the plugs go. Alright, so what's the next steps with this thing? I guess what I'll do is I'll try reseating all those connectors on this board and maybe cleaning it a bit and I'll then try and put it back together I suppose. I'm gonna try cleaning these pads off because they're full of dust and stuff, isopropyl alcohol and wipe them down and clean connectors, reseat them, I'll just lay that stuff together so that I've got some chance of working out where it goes back together. So do we need to look at any of this stuff in particular? Just boards full of ICs and things. Not really going to be able to find out much about them because they're all custom Sony things. All the important stuff, all the heavy lifting. So perhaps at some point in the future, let's have a look at the side screen thing, wherever that went. The display on the side. And we'll just have a look at what that looks like. And then maybe later on I'll do a video on replacing the screen and putting it all back together, but I'm not sure about that. Depends if that happens. I don't know, is it worth fixing this camera, trying to fix it? If that board's wrecked, then I don't think it'll be worth it because it'll probably cost heaps of money to get one of those if it's possible. Even getting the replacement LCD screen on the side will be... It's, I looked it up. 170 something dollars. Is it worth it just for fun? Ah, perhaps first what I need to do is get hold of the memory card, a memory card, and see will this go to record mode? But even so I don't have a lens, so it's kind of useless without a lens. Yes, yeah, so it's debatable of if there's a value in fixing this. It's a pretty old camera too, even though it's quite fancy, it's been around a while. Uh, I guess we'll have to pull the knobs off in order to get these things out. And there's another little tiny cable. Uh, that's gross. Oh no. There's more, more layers of stuff with more crust and dirt in there. Okay, so the next step is the LCD panel board, and that has a connector like that. Pretty delicate little thing. Is that uh, dust along there? It's been near where the fan blows. Check if this battery's got any voltage left in it. Probably doesn't. Let's look at that now. Now that we're here, nope, completely dead. Alright, so I guess do we need a new one of those if we're going to worry about trying to fix this thing? So now what we've got, pulled off the board, now we've got another board which has got a Spartan chip on it and it's got corrosion and that needs this plastic stuff pulled out of the way without breaking it. Seems to be attached. Oh, so that pushes on these buttons, but it's also attached to those. Oh, so those those things there are squeezed over. Oh no, that's come out. Okay, those go in those. Yeah, so those there are squeezed over posts, and we'll have to pull those off. I'll just take a photo of the arrangement of those buttons. I've got something easy to look up. Then once those are undone, then there's three screws holding the LCD thing in. And all of this has quite bad corrosion all over it. Well, not too bad, but pretty nasty. So in order to get that off now, we've got to very carefully pry off those button caps. Okay, then that can lift off, then they all fall out. Oh, it's all corroded behind them. Now, we can lift this piece out. It's got the display on it. 
So that we got there. So that is the damage display. Wonder if that is useful to know. Probably not because that just looks like the part numbers related to the PCB manufacturing. It's got multiple layers on it. And you can see the die on glass along there be the display controller thing. So I guess I'll put it all back together, reseat all the connectors, test it with a memory card to see if it records, and depending on what happens there, decide whether it's worth trying to fix any other bits. So that's plugged back in. Oh yeah, I want to wash this plate first. Everything's gonna fall apart. A complicated thing. All right, so there you go. That was a a quite fairly destructive teardown, and this that's all the stuff that's inside it. A lot of stuff, a lot of boards, and a lot of very fine, delicate cables. Now you don't need to take your one apart to see what's in it. Yeah, we didn't look under that, did we? Maybe we should just look under that briefly. See if there's anything exciting hiding. Oh no, there's another screw. Don't pull on it too hard when the screws aren't all undone yet. Oh, look at that. A Xilinx Vertex 16 PGA. Something like that. And some more dirty uh, thermal transferring pads. The HPR44 board. Must have a lot of image processing going on in the FPGA. And then some supervising... Um, microcontroller computer-y thing to look after it. Oh yeah, look at that. All the pairs going into there. And then some pairs coming out. All the other way around. Because I can't remember where either of these cables went to. Let's see, there, DPR LVDS. And this one, it's written under that. DPR GCS. And that is IF Golgo. G-O-L-G-O. Great! There you go, that's the exciting insides of PMW-F5. Hopefully that was exciting. It's pretty exciting for me to find out what's in there. I thought I'd finished the video, but then I did more stuff. So I spent uh, about an hour or so, it's the next day, but I'd spent about an hour or so putting this thing back together, trying to get everything in the right place, and Hopefully that has occurred. Hopefully everything's in the right place. And I took apart the control panel side and gave it a bit of a wash, though that didn't really make much difference. And now we can put that back together. Pretty sure that goes that way. The screen. I also, it cost quite a lot of money to get a replacement LCD panel for this. But what I found out, looking on you search for this PMW F5 replacement LCD screen and you get some listings on eBay and they're quite expensive to buy the panel but then if you look up the part number of that panel you can find another website and it lists compatible models along the bottom and that's a bunch of consumer still cameras and digital cameras that have this model of the panel in it, and I thought, okay, well, I just buy a busted one of those cameras off eBay, but there weren't any mini listed. Thought that would be cheaper. There isn't any. But then, if you search for the models of those cameras and say replacement LCD panel, you get a bunch of options that are way cheaper than that, like thirty, twenty-five, or thirty dollars on e on on AliExpress for replacement panel for those camera models supposedly use the same screen as this, except what they have is a resistive touch on it. So it's the same screen, but it's got a touch panel stuck over it, which means there's an exist an another cable. So I might, well, if we put this back together and it still powers up and sort of functions, then maybe I should order one of those screens to stick in here, and we can do a video on replacing the screen. Maybe, I don't know whether it's really worth it, but Maybe it'll be fun. I can't work out what, where this thing goes. 
I thought it'd come off this, but I really don't know. I was going to look in the service manual to try and find out where it come from, but I haven't done that yet. Surely it just goes somewhere. It's got a weird curved shape. Made me sure it was fallen out of this. You see the little speaker thing under there. It is the quite the kind of curve that fits down the side there or down here. Couldn't get that earphone socket thing out. I also took this from this side that thing unscrewed. So I first took that cover off and then uh, that comes off and just unplugs. And then the audio adapter thing that unscrews from the side and comes off. So I think that's some optional module. Maybe you can get something else that goes on there. It seems, I took the side off and looked in there briefly, it seems quite a passive thing. It's just joining the connectors up to the relevant pins depending on the position of those switches to change it between the different modes. Okay, I think we can put this back. Still don't understand this. Surely that goes in there. There's exploded views in the manual. I could look at it. Alright, there was this annoying to undo wire that plugs onto that because it's quite short. Maybe it'd be better to unplug it from the other end. Mm. Okay, that's in. Okay, that's in. Now this thing here, pretty sure that went under this and then lined up with various things. I guess, probably, maybe. Alright, and then some screws. Also, I don't know where that piece went. It's some kind of thing that I don't know. I guess if it's not obvious where it goes, it's not that important. That's a general rule for that stuff, isn't it? That's the little encoder knob for the menu. I'm wondering how many screws are going to be left over once all this stuff is put back together. It's probably more than none. Although, two more holes left, two more of those little screws, maybe we are okay. But there's heaps of these larger screws. Okay, and then there's wires. That one. I think that's the sensing of whether you got the earphones plugged in or not. Tiny little two pin connector. Then there's the speaker, which is under that little vent thing there, grill, whatever. And then there's that, which is the power switch. And then that little thing that does something. And yeah, whatever that is. Okay. And then there's the encoder knob for the menu thing. That one doesn't work. Ah, uh, it works. Just lost its click feel. Those ones don't seem to be very good either. And then there's those four buttons that... I'll have to work out the order and put those on later. When I look at the picture. Okay, we'll put the back side on. But it's got all the connectors. And then we'll put on the other side and then we'll try it out. See what happens. Mm, what about that wire? That one goes in there. Then this one, which is really short. And then that one, which goes into the USB, the base of the USB socket. They're plugged in, and the wires are all kind of tucked out of the way. Cable for the USB connectors in the way, though. Oh, yeah, that seems alright. Okay, so now some screws on the side. A lot of them are very crusty. Okay, I suppose we'll put that USB thingy my bob back in there. So I think all we gotta do is put that other side back on and then we can juice it up. Because it won't matter if um, those other IO thingies aren't there or that audio thing. It'll be fine. But we'll need this. She's got several plugs, well oh, three, the one for the earphone connector, that which is probably a power thing, presumably that didn't go to anything, and that which plugs onto, or does it go that way, maybe it goes that way, yeah, nice, there you go, it goes that way, and then that just kind of mushes up there, so now, I mm, should have dusted that out before putting it back on, okay, Suppose we're ready to try it. How do I know if I have a 
if I've messed up any of these other connectors where they all had they were the same like number of pins so it was really hard to know that you got the right one in the right place guess we'll find out when we turn it on if it doesn't work or smoke comes out of it then I guess some of them weren't in the right place uh, yeah there's also those little cover things but I guess those can push in later okay we'll just try it then was it sub SDI that was the one we used I think so or should I check something problem is it's all done up too tightly now to check it might be one screw left over maybe anyway oh look it still does that oh that's flashing more than before isn't it oh no I think it's just the oh, the encoder thing doesn't work oh is that because it's on lock yes lucky I think it's the same as before, isn't it? E9111D. So I guess we haven't made it worse. Still does that. Well, there you go then. It's not worse. What I don't know is, will that clear when a memory card gets put in it and let it record? Probably not. Oh, yeah, the menu button still works. Oh, I don't think the cancel back button does though. Or does it? That probably means you got to be in a menu first, doesn't it? Yeah, it still works. Ah, oh, it's just pushed in almost the whole way, all the time, that's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, so the power consumption of this camera is currently 22, 23 watts. Or oh, at 13 volts input. Let's sort of power it by that so we can see what's going on. Yeah, that's... That's the thing. Alright, so I guess it's good we didn't make it worse. And we got to have a look at what's inside it. Maybe I'll wait until I've got a memory card to try in it before I decide to replace the screen. I don't know. I can't decide whether it's worth doing any of that. Mm, we need to fix that button though. The cancel back button is a bit munted now. Which means I have to take it all apart again to fix it. I guess the bottom one's file, since that makes that happen. Camera... Oh, that there should turn on the colour bars over here, maybe? Oh no, that was the menu. That... That's the text. Oh, I thought I'd set one of these buttons to turn on the colour bars. Guess not. There's the colour bars on a thing there. It's because of the corrosion on the metal that these buttons stick when you push them in. Oh, look at that. Status. Hmm, okay. Assignable button status. So three with color bars. Media status. Yeah, whereas in the menu the other day, the, the color bars could be turned on and off. Great, there you go. Now we'll actually finish the video. Now that we've fiddled around for a lot more, so there you go, that's a teardown, look inside, somewhat reassembly of a sort of functioning but not really Sony solid state memory camcorder PMW-F5. And maybe there'll be follow-up videos later on if something happens or doesn't happen. I don't know. We'll see. So stay tuned. But there'll be heaps of other video equipment and things coming up. I did order a... ASXS card, but not specifically for this, but because I got this camera which also takes those cards, so I want to try that out. And we got this sort of not really complete camera which also takes those cards, and this does turn on and gives an output from its. Uh, I think I tested the HDMI output maybe. So yeah, we'll have a play with that at some point. Lots of things to look at. But that's it for today.